Welcome back to my channel. It's your boy 4KIT. Today, we are going to discuss laws of indices. Indices shows numbers that have been multiplied by themselves to represent roots, such as the square root and some fractions. The laws of indices enable expressions involving powers Laws of indices enable expressions involving powers to be manipulated more efficiently than writing them out in full. Let's talk about index. An index or power is the small floating number that appears after a number or a letter. The plural, the plural of index is indices. Indices show how many times a number or letter has been multiplied by itself. If we can write a number in the following form, y equal base a to the power of x. The number y here is said to be equal to the number a raised to the power of x. a is known as the base. The base means the number which is to be multiplied by itself successively and x is known as the power or the index to which a is raised or simply the exponent of a. So let's take a look at the following reminder before we go further. Remember we say algebra uses symbol or letter to represent the unknown quantities in the previous video that we did. For example, i equal p or t. Here, High is used to stand for interest, P for principal, R for rate, and T is used to represent time. A quantity made up of symbols together with operation of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division is called an algebraic expression. We use the laws of indices to simplify expression involving indices. So to manipulate expressions involving indices, we use rules known as the laws of indices. The laws should be used precisely as they are stated. Let's take a look at the following laws of indices. The first law Law of multiplication, otherwise known as product rule. When expression with the same base are multiplied, the indices are added. This, that is, if the two terms have the same base and are, and they are to be multiplied together, their indices are added. For example, we have a base a to the power of m multiplied by another base a to the power of n. Following the fourth law, that should be a to the power of m plus n. Or, x to the power of m multiplied by x to the power of n. That is going to equal to x to the power of m plus n. Another example, if we have 2 to the power of 4 multiplied by 2 to the power of 6, that is going to equal 2 to the power of 4 plus 6, simply equal 2 to the power of 10. The second law, that's the division or quotient law. When expression with the same base are divided, the indices are subtracted. 
If the two terms have the same base, like we say in the first law, or then if they are to be divided, we just simply subtract it. For example, x to the power of n divided by x to the power of m, that is going to equal x to the power of n minus m, or b to the power of n divided by b to the power of m simply that should equal to b to the power of n minus m another example five to the five base five to the power of eight divided by another base five to the power of three using the second law or quotient law we simply should have five to the power of eight minus three which is going to equal five to the power of five else double check the first law and the second law say for instance we have m to the power of 2 multiplied by m to the power of 4 remember the first law said if we have a, a base that need to be multiplied by itself of the same base we can simply add both together so now we're gonna have m 2 to the power of 2 plus 4 that should equal to m to the power of 6 so but we do know m to the power of 2 is the same thing as m multiplied by itself two times. Then we have multiplication sign m to the power of 4. That means we need to multiply m by itself four times. Are you following me? Of course. Then we have another M. Okay, we have M to the power of two, one, two, and we have another one, M to the power of four, one, two, three, four. If we count them all together, what we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Simply, we have m to the power of six. That means the first law does make sense. Now, let's take a look at the second law. The second law is the what? The quotient rule, the law of division. So simply, if we have k to the power of 4 divided by another k to the power of right here so now 4 minus 2 we simply have k to the power of 2 right but we can do this in another way k to the power of 4 means we have to multiply k by itself how many times four times so we have three then we have four now divide it by k to the power of two which is one and what and two now k cancel k another k cancel k ladies and 
gentlemen, how many K do we have left? We only got one, two. So basically, the quotient rule does work. The third law is the power rule. If a term with a power it's itself raised to a power, then the power are multiplied together. Note that M and N have been multiplied to yield the new index. We have base A to the power of N to another power of M. That is going to equal to base A to the power of M multiplied by N. Or, if we have base X to the power of N into another power of M, simply we have to multiply N and M, that should equal X to the power of MN. Another example, say we have 3 to the power of 4 into another power of 4. So we can simply say 3 to the power of 4 multiplied by 4, which is 3 simply to the power of 16. The fourth law is the inverse rule. If a term with a power is raised to a negative power. Remember, second law of quotient. If we have x, I mean, if we have a base uh, to the, uh, if we have uh, uh, two, I mean, if we have a base to the, to the same, I mean, if we have letters or number to the same base, and we have to divide them so we can simply subtract them. x to the power of 4 divided by x to the power of 6 it's simply going to be x to the power of 4 minus 6 4 minus 6 that will be minus 2 and inverse will be 1 over x squared or x to the power of 2 same thing right here b to the power of 2 or b squared divided by b to the power of 3 that will equal b to the power of 2 minus 3 simply b to the power of negative 1 which is the same as 1 over b for another example 5 to the power of 7 divided by 5 to the power of 9 that should equal 5 to the power of 7 minus 9 which is 5 to the power of negative 2 which is uh, inversely as 1 over 5 to the power of 2 the fifth law there is zero exponents the second law of indices helps to explain why anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1 a to the power 0 is 1 x to the power 0 is 1 for example x to the power of 2 or x squared divided by x squared we all know if we have like term divided by itself it's going to equal to 1 so x to the power of 2 is the same thing as x multiplied by x x squared right here is the same thing as x multiplied by x x cancel s x cancel s what we got left that's 1 and we do know x squared and x squared using the quotient rule should be the same thing as x to the power of 2 minus 2. And 2 minus 2 is what? It's 0. So if x squared over x squared equal to 1, and x squared over x squared equal x squared, I mean x to the power of 2 minus 2, if this is the same as these, and this equal to 1 simply, they should equal to 1. That's how we can prove it. The sixth law is fractional power. Both the numerators and denominator of a fractional power have many. And the top line of the fractional power gives the usual power of the whole term. So if we have x to the power of m divided by n, so simply it's going to be root x root to the power of n, I mean x root of n to the power of m. So another example, say we have b to the power of 3 fourths. So simply it's going to be b root 4 to the power of 3. Another example here we have 64 to the power of 3 fourths. Simply it would be 
for it, I mean fourth root of 64 to the power of 3. Fourth root of 64 will be 2 root to the power of 3, simply 8. Thank you very much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends and tell them to share this with their friends.